All right, all right. Well, good afternoon. It's good to see uh, each and every one of you. Uh, my name is Pastor Jeff Williams, and welcome back to the Savior's Cross broadcast. I want to welcome on my left uh, preacher uh, Jamie Ellis. It's good to see you again, brother. And uh, we've got a very, very special guest tonight on our uh, panel tonight, uh, Preacher David McCall. Good to see you, brother. We appreciate that. We've, we've been away um, either four or five weeks. Mm -hmm. I believe it is on the 5th of January. Uh, uh, brother Ellis and myself, we made an attempt to start a series uh, on the tabernacle. And uh, it seems like that right after we we done the introductory um, uh, broadcast, uh, COVID set in. Uh, I I uh, had COVID, and uh, Brother David has uh, um, has had COVID, and 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 re restoring from that. And uh, so far, Brother Ellis. Uh, the Lord has sealed him. <laughs> the Lord has the Lord has put Thank a you, Lord. Lord has put a hedge <laughs> around him, brother. But hey, I, I praise I the Lord. Hope for it that. stays. Amen. Amen. But um, thank you for for tuning in to the Savior's Cross broadcast. And some may ask, what is the purpose uh, of this broadcast? And uh, when, first and foremost, it's to uh, to exalt the Lord Jesus Absolutely. Christ. Is to exalt him and his finished work on the cross. Um, I was telling some today. Uh, I actually had an opportunity to uh, talk to a man on the street today. And uh, we began talking about things. Began talking about the shape of Gastonia and things that was going on. And um, I asked him a question. Um, I said, uh, if Jesus Christ did not address every problem that mankind would face then God messed up then God messed up on his redemption plan and you know he looked at me like you know he'd never thought about it that way but we we know for a fact uh, we're there's three I'm sure there's three living testimonies here that God Almighty through his son hey through yes. his son and yes. through the finished work uh, that he did on the cross. He addressed, he has certainly, certainly addressed and is still addressing yes. the problems of, of old Jeff. But that's what this broadcast is, is all about. And uh, we would ask you to, to like and share it. And uh, maybe um, if there's someone you would think that would be interested in learning uh, about the tabernacle. Uh, now the purpose of the tabernacle We'll, we'll, we'll give you a little bit of pre-introduction. Uh, for almost 500 years, <clears throat> the tabernacle served as a place uh, for God to dwell among his people. Uh, it was by his uh, specifications, by his plan. And um, it was also a place where God's people could approach him. Uh, it was the central figure in the lives of the Israelites while they were traveling through the wilderness. And the key to understanding the tabernacle is to keep in mind when everything you see, everything that, that the Word of God says, and by the way, we're, we'll be coming out of Exodus chapter 27, I believe starting at verse number 9. Uh, as, as we look at the tabernacle, uh, it, is, it, it is to open our eyes to looking forward to the person and work of Christ. And I believe, uh, gentlemen, I, I guess you would agree with me that it, uh, it should be a study, uh, the study of, or the pursuit of a, the study of the tabernacle should be uh, something that every Christian uh, should seek to do if they want to really see and feel and understand what Christ has um, accomplished for us. Would there be any opening comments about the tabernacle in general? Just revisiting it for me is is very. It's it's a great blessing, uh, and not only that, but the God is continually giving me fresh light, mm -hmm. uh, and in relation to how everything is typified in the person of Christ. Amen. Amen. I, I think it's uh, 
It just makes me appreciate the dispensation of grace. Amen, Amen to that. <laughs> Amen to you that. know, because, I mean, it's a lot of work. Uh, it was a lot of work to get to God. Amen. That's then, true. You know, and uh, it was God's way of doing it, but nonetheless, it was a lot of work. We just, we can come to God anywhere now. So. Right. Amen. I, I, we're, we're spoiled. Praise uh, the Lord. This possession of grace is Amen. a blessing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to uh, get up from the chair for just a moment uh, <clears throat> until we uh, figure this out a little bit closer. But those that are tuning in, uh, <clears throat> I want to uh, maybe point out some things. Uh, this is uh, Rose's guide. Uh, to the tabernacle. This is where this picture uh, came from, this photo came from, and uh, it is a cutaway uh, of the tabernacle. And um, as we were saying at the beginning, this was the tent of worship or the place of worship for the children of Israel after they had left Egypt, after they had, God had delivered them from Egypt, God had set them on a journey uh, through the wilderness and uh, as we'll see, we'll, we want to uh, observe uh, the inside and outside of the tabernacle. This is just a cutaway of the high priest here and, and his garments. Uh, we won't, we won't uh, talk about him too much now, but the tabernacle was the central theme in the lives of the Israelites, setting right in the middle uh, of the camp, so to speak. Uh, we were talking about it before the broadcast. We see that, um, and through God's word, everything that we're saying is, is, we, is backed up through the word of God. But the children of Israel were spread on the north, south, east, and west. Three tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel, three tribes on each side of the tabernacle with the tribe in the forefront here facing the gate uh, being the tribe of Judah. And I don't believe that was an accident uh, that God placed that uh, right. facing that uh, uh, front gate or that door to the tabernacle. Now tonight, um, we want to, this is kind of the first night really getting our, our feet wet in the tabernacle itself. And <clears throat> with the help of the Lord tonight, we are going to be taking a look at the fence, the perimeter of the tabernacle. And we're going to read out of God's Word, and after we take a look at the fence and also uh, the sockets and the boards which, which kept the fence standing, we'll look at that, and then if we have time, we will look at the gate. And keep in mind that everything, and we mean everything, concerning the tabernacle is a shadow, a foreshadow pointing toward Jesus Christ Absolutely. and his finished work. So we'll jump in there uh, with the help of the Lord and we'll ask Brother Ellis to, to start in verse number 9 of chapter 27 of Exodus. And thou shalt make the court of the tabernacle for the south side, southward. There shall be hangings for the court of fine twine linen of a hundred cubits long for one side. All right, gentlemen, just chime in at any time. But we see here uh, in verse 9, and Brother David brought it out <coughs> even before the broadcast, that everything about the tabernacle, its dimensions, its materials, its location, even the direction in which the tabernacle gate would face was all of God. It was none of man. Man, God give the dimensions as, as here he's talking to Moses. He's talking to his servant. And uh, Brother David, you was mentioning before the broadcast how that, that uh, anything that God does to deliver man, man cannot have his hands in it. God has to be the one to give the plan. That's right. He has to be the, the originator. He's the Alpha and Omega. And anything, everything from the beginning to the end of any kind of relationship uh, that we have with him, it all has to originate from him. That's right. And, and it starts at the cross. Amen. Um, Amen. For us, um, for them, they didn't have the cross. Right. Uh, they had to uh, 
Well, we'll get into that yes, later. Yes. But, but they had to build it the way he, he said. mandated. Amen. 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 Well, we see we see it that in the scripture, and thou shalt make the court of the tabernacle for the south side southward. There will be hangings for the court of fine twined linen of a hundred cubits long for one side. Brother Ellis, uh, what is what is the Lord trying to show us here concerning uh, the, the 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 perimeter of this? of this structure and the perimeter of this tent of meeting um, starting right off the bat the first item of material that's listed is fine twined linen brother Ellis, what does that represent the righteousness of christ it represents his righteousness uh, his perfect righteousness the way god designed <coughs> the, the outer the fence that thereof he did it in a in a way of perfection and and there's so much more that we will get into here as we look at it but the the white linen the fine twine linen is is just pearl white white as you can get and that represents again i say the righteousness of christ amen Amen. A, a verse of scripture jumped into my mind. You, you gentlemen will probably have to tell me where it is. Though your sins be as crimson, they shall be white as wool. Yes. And the, 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 the righteousness and the purity that Christ portrays uh, here in the tabernacle is... The righteousness that we can approach, we can we start making that first step. Even even in the the Hebrews here, when they made the first step toward this tent of meeting, in essence they were making a step toward the righteousness of Christ. Yes, they For they could not approach God with their own righteousness. They just as you and you and I, we cannot approach God. In any matter of fact, uh, does not the word also say that our righteousness is as filthy rags? And uh, Brother Ellis brought it out. This this linen, uh, this fine twined linen. Uh, I looked that up uh, in the Hebrew, and uh, it carries the idea that Brother Ellis said this this linen was snow white, and it was fine. It was finely knitted. Or sewn together, it was it was no doubt uh, uh, immaculate in its construction. Uh, it was the best of the best, so to speak. And and this does it foreshadows the perfect righteousness and life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You think about all those years, all that time uh, that they would, when God would say, "We're moving," when God would move. As in the wilderness, as they as the tabernacle would be taken down and they would move, and how how meticulous uh, the Levites had to be, how how they had to take care, yes, very very careful attention uh, and to keep it clean, and uh, you know that that's amazing to me. How but yet, I mean God, in the process of all that, He fed them. Here comes manna from yes, heaven yes. and every time they moved uh, it's, it's not anything less than a miracle for the material to stay intact as God as God did I mean they had shoes that wouldn't wear out right I mean they just kept going and going and going and the Lord uh, kept coming down and manifesting himself and so that being his dwelling place uh, um, and, and you know I thought of this a moment ago as the, the fence the, the totality of it all the way as it meets to the gate and how the how the, that the tabernacle fence itself as you were stating there was about 3 million it said that there was about 3 million mm -hmm. Jews yes. uh, that were surrounding this and this being the I, this is the central figure of their existence. Yes. God set this 
so that they would see him, that they would know him, that they would realize who he is. And, you know, tying that in with this dispensation of grace, how the Lord uh, works through the power and the person of the Holy Spirit yes. to take the world and, and continue. Jesus said, and I, if yeah. I be lifted up, draw. I will draw all men unto me. Yes. And so this was the drawing, uh, the, the drawing point for the Jews. And not just, thank God, it's not just for the Jews anymore. Amen. The door has been opened wide. Yes. The veil has been rent. So we'll get to that later. But how wonderful and exciting it is to know that we can come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain this mercy and find God's grace to help. Amen. In the time of need. Um, gentlemen, I was, I was thinking while you, you were speaking, brother, of the tabernacle being the central figure. <laughs> and when those... When those Hebrews, when they come out the door of their tent, well, that was the first thing that they saw. They saw that court fence, the righteousness of Christ, foreshadowing the righteousness of Christ. I cannot help but be reminded of John chapter 1, verse 14, and the Word was made flesh yes, and dwelt among them. That's it. And that is exactly a type and foreshadow uh, of their uh, what a magnificent sight this must have been. Mm. Amen. 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 That uh, word dwelt actually means tabernacle. It does. It, it, I, you're absolutely right. For the, for the word was made flesh and tabernacle That's right. among us. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, this court foreshadowed Christ uh, on earth as, as we have said, tabernacling among men. Uh, just a note, Exodus chapter 39, verse 40, call this the tent of the congregation. It was the appointed place where the Israelites were to worship God. Now, there is an appointed place for you and I yes. to right. worship God. There's an appointed place, and there is only one place and one way. It, it, the, the court speaks of Christ as, as the only meeting place between God and the Hebrew people. In other words, they could not go out of their tent door and just go off into the wilderness or go off on their own and approach God. Gentlemen, that gives us a thought. There's a lot of people in this day and time that we're living in, try and attempt to get to God through their own means. That's right. Yeah. Amen. And uh, the but but to get to Jehovah, mm. to get to Jehovah, those Israelites had to make a step toward the tabernacle. That's right. And the beauty of it is, is there's one gate. That's right. It is narrow compared to the rest of the tabernacle. Oh, yeah. the the, there's one, that gate is Christ. And the, Amen. The, the doorway is Christ. And, you know, even Psalm 100 says, enter his gates yes. with thanksgiving and his Amen. courts Amen. with praise. Amen. So this is a, the very beginning of all of that to come. Yes. Amen. Also, um, we think of this, guys, even though there was nowhere else that the Hebrews could go to approach God, on the very, on the very opposite, it was a whosoever will. Yeah. Whoever, whosoever, who, whosoever let him come and, and drink uh, of the water of life freely. And in, in other words, no matter what, and I love this, no matter what, <laughs> And this was real, uh, folks. This was not. This is not uh, Aesop's fables. That's right. This is. Right. This was a real place, and a real tabernacle, a real tent of meeting. And no matter what anyone had done, they could approach. As we'll we'll get into a little bit later, they could approach God's way 
to get to him. Amen. Any other comments on on the on the fence uh, or on the fine twine linen uh, <laughs> itself? That, I mean, we could go, we could we could just keep going. Even in the book of Revelation, speaks of the saints that uh, will come back. We will be we will be clothed or robed in fine, fine linen, linen. That's right. and which is another picture of the righteousness of Christ. Makes you want to shout. It does. It does. <laughs> we're we're not gonna. You know, I was thinking too, and it's kind of maybe it's silly, but there's not. Uh, God does not have a group of angels up there in a big sewing room, uh, sewing uh, white sheets for <laughs> God's people. Right. We will actually be arrayed in the glory of God Ooh. that comes Hallelujah. through the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we come back to this earth again, we will come back with power and glory and we will be following the one in whom this tabernacle represented. I'm thinking about the transfiguration when Jesus uh, revealed his glory. He actually un it was unraveled, yes, uh, unveiled, if you will, uh, as Peter, James, and John was with <coughs> him there, and Moses and Elijah came down floating from outer space, yeah. and how that uh, God spoke when Peter spoke up, like we would do, we would probably do the same thing, mm -hmm. uh, probably worse, right? But you know, uh, he said, "This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased." Hear him. Yes. Look to him. And they saw, they had that that uh, wonderful uh, experience of being able to see the unraveled righteousness which would be imputed within them. Yes. That same righteousness is within us. And so uh, the the robe is is really in us. That's true. The robe of righteousness That's has true. been imputed within us That's through true. the That's righteousness good. of Christ. Amen. And when we are changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, Ooh. we're going to unravel yes. that glory that's in us. That's why sometimes uh, when you get excited, the Holy Spirit moves on you, we shout glory, glory, Amen. glory to God. And, Amen. and in that, gl that glory is going to come out. Uh, we don't look like it now, and we don't feel like it a lot of times, but what God put in us will one day be unveiled. The thing that he did inside of me, inside of the brethren here, and you, uh, those who are watching, if yeah. God has saved you by his grace and washed you in the blood of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have been given a robe. Of righteousness, which you'll wear for eternity. Amen. I, it's just wonderful, just to really, and I, I know that we're on a broadcast, and <laughs> and but it's just it's just wonderful, just to sit here and dwell on the very thought of being robed mm. in the righteousness of my Savior. That when God the Father looks at me. Because I have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, trusted him as my Lord and Savior, accepted him as my Lord and Savior. And the righteousness of Christ, this, this so-called fine twined linen has been given to me that when the Father looks at me, he sees his Son. Mm. No matter what I've done, no matter where I've been, the, 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 the stains of sin, they're gone. They're gone. And as if really, as if they had never existed right. because of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. You look at that. Now let's, I want to say one more Go thing ahead. about the fence. Yes. I mean, that's typifying the glory that is in us. That righteousness, the righteousness of Christ. And when you look at the, the gate or the door, <laughs> you see the regal royal. Oh, yeah. righteousness of Christ right. uh, I mean going the only way that you can have this righteousness imputed within you've got to go through the door you can't. Jesus right. said I am the door one way in there's only one way one Jesus way. said I am the way 
right. the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So uh, when you go through that that door that and step into the presence of what would take place, that brazen altar, and yes. I, I know we're going to get to that, but that brazen altar, this is the cross. This Amen. is a picture of Calvary. Yes. Yes. This is yes. where that righteousness is imputed within us yes. by the person and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And you know, Psalm, what is uh, 84 says, my soul longs, even pants. Yes. For the courts of the right. Lord. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes. You can't get to the courts without going through Christ first. That's right. That's it. Amen. You have to. He has to come to you. You have to yes. come to him. It's, yes. a, it's a meeting of the spirits. Amen. Amen. And that's a type. That's what makes your soul oh, pant yeah. Yeah. for the courts of the Lord. That's right. Actually, it's beautiful actually uh, in turn, we're saying uh, that we're panting for Christ. Yes. Our soul is longing for him. And if that's uh, missing, something's wrong. That's true. That is true. Um, Absolutely. One, one last uh, thought uh, about the fence. Uh, and I read this in uh, Brother Swaggart's uh, commentary on the book of Exodus. I thought was a was a great thought. As 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 o over my shoulder here, we see the the fence, and we see the white, and we see the cords, and the ropes, and the boards. Mm -hmm. To to you and I, it's seeing the righteousness of Christ. It is it is it is glorious to look at. But to the world, That's right. the world looks at that. And just like maybe, maybe one of these Israelites or maybe, um, maybe a stranger that had come into the camp and, and decided that, that, that he or she was going to live with them and make their life with them. Well, maybe waking up on, um, on the Sabbath and, and all of the people making their way toward this tabernacle toward this court toward this fence and to the to the to the untrained eye or to the unbeliever uh, someone might say what's the big deal about going to the fence in other words there's nothing really attractive about it uh, it's white and maybe not seeing and understanding but the thing about it is is once you get inside yeah. Mm. Once you get inside, yes, it, there is a whole, a whole different yes, world. Amen. And and That's looking it. at Christ, looking at Jesus Christ and His finished work from the world's point of view, right now, it does not look too attractive. And there may be someone watching. They may this this video may wind up in the hands of someone that says, "What is it uh, that makes you?" Uh, do the way you do and speak the way you speak and act the way you act over a man named Jesus because I just don't see the attractiveness looking toward a man that hung on two boards. Well, I want to say, you know, at first, it was not attractive to me, but I took a step toward it. And in faith, I took a step toward the, toward the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I took a step toward the Lord Jesus Christ, the, and in belief and in faith, the Lord allowed me to see the riches of his grace. Yes, he, he began, and he's still showing me today the unsearchable, unfathomable riches of Christ. And I would say it again to reiterate, Jesus, it may not look too attractive, but friend, if you'll accept him into your life and into your heart, he'll take you, and as, as we're going, he will take you in through the gate, and, he will, and you will wind up, glory to God, in the holy of holies next to God himself. You know, I was just thinking about um, the old rugged cross, the song. Uh, the, the next verse, the, I think it's the second verse, has a wondrous attraction for me. Yes. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above Amen. to pardon and sanctify me. Uh, what a wonderful thought. I mean, 
once as you said I and I'm glad you brought that out preacher because getting on the inside is is everything that's right uh, if you never step inside uh, into this court into this place into Christ so to speak and Christ stepping inside yes. of you yes sir so it works both ways and yes. once that takes place then the cross then becomes a wondrous attraction. Uh, why? Because he's lifted you. Amen. He's lifted the burden of sin that was heavy yes. upon your soul, that was weighing you down, that old burden that you couldn't, you couldn't handle it. You couldn't uh, get rid of it on your own. And so somebody had to help you. Somebody had to remove it. And that's what Jesus did. When God saved us, he lifted. Do you remember that? Remember that moment, that oh, time yes. when he lifted that burden of sin. And then, after doing so, there, there's something that, that as an ongoing, in an ongoing way, the cross is, listen, it's not just effective for salvation. That's right. The cross is effective for everything That's in right. our lives. Right. The cross is... That's why the songwriter could say it's a wondrous attraction yes. for me because I can continue to go back and reap the benefits of what Christ did there on that cross. There's, there's so much that comes. It's yes. not just salvation. You just don't just get in. You get in on it all. Oh, yeah. You That's get right. in on That's all right. the riches that are in Christ Jesus. That's right. Everything that he has becomes ours. Everything that, listen, everything that we were, gone. That's right. Jesus Amen. did what needed to be done to get rid of my mess. Amen. And my mess, as I am continually walking with him or endeavoring to do so, he's continuing to rid me of mess after mess. When you fall, pick yourself up. Amen. Ask God to forgive you. Keep Amen. on going and Amen. let God have his way. Amen. And Keep your eyes on Christ and Him crucified. You know what's Amen. so beautiful, Pastor Jeff, is that he's talking about taking that step yeah. of faith. Yeah. You know, it, it's such a little bit of faith. That's right. But it's so little. Right. It, it, it might almost seem like you're trying to fool yourself sometimes at the very beginning. Right. It's like, well, maybe I'll check out this Jesus thing. But the moment you take that step, mm. It's done. That's right. Yes, hallelujah. It's done That's right, right. right. then. It, 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 there's right. No, no thing to go do. Right. I mean, if we could do something for salvation, then it wouldn't be worth having because we did it. Right. That's right, man. We had to do it. But aside from that, is once you do take that step of faith, which is really all you can do, we become, once he comes and the Holy Spirit dwells in us, we become that tabernacle. That's right. Oh, yes. That's right. Absolutely. The Holy Spirit Amen. of God yes. comes, and, and that's why we get to experience all those wonderful things that, that we could never deserve, that we could never walk into on our own. Only, only the Holy Spirit of God can cause you to be a tabernacle. Amen. That's right. That now, that's that, awesome. brings, that brings uh, fresh light to the words of Christ when he said, Take up the cross. Mm hmm daily and follow me take up the daily cross and so uh, you know as you just said once we're in once that happens once that takes place that those benefits they keep on coming they, they keep, keep on, on yeah. coming they do. and the only way they can keep really we can begin or continue to enjoy those blessings and benefits of the cross is to take up the daily cross. That is dying to self, denying yourself. That word deny means actually die. Die. And that's why Paul said, I die daily. I realize that it's it's got to be no longer Paul, but Christ. It's not I, he said, but Christ. Yes. In me. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, um, I, and I, and I know you guys are too, I'm a, I'm a huge... Uh, uh, student uh, of the message of the cross, and uh, as I was, as, as you guys were speaking about this this fence and uh, going inside, we we understand through the Word of God that Jesus Christ 
is the source yes. of all things that we get from God. That's, right. That's kind of a no-brainer in Christianity. We should know that, that Jesus Christ is the source. Mm -hmm. No man cometh unto the Father but by That's me. Right. Right. And, you know, at the risk of messing up the screen, um, gentlemen, um, here is where God would dwell. That's why we see his glory. Yeah. God would dwell on the mercy seat. So if God is here, I, I have things that I need from God. God has everything. God has forgiveness. He has joy, yes. peace. He, he has the means to break chains. So I need to get here. But before I can get here, I have to, I have to come here. I have to make a step toward the righteousness of Christ by faith. And when I make a step toward Christ, that, as Brother David said, wonderfully said, as, as we take that minimal step toward Christ through faith, he begins opening the doors and, and, and we will find ourselves through faith. And again, I know we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but the ultimate, the ultimate place to be was here. Because that is where God dwelt. So I, I, th I think looking at the court, looking at the fence, I just seen that just a few minutes ago that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the, in this central figure, Jesus Christ is the source of all things, all things to God. that you need. There's things in our lives that we can't change. That's right. There's things in our children's lives that we can't change. It's going to take supernatural to overcome some of the things in our lives. So when we begin to fully understand that Jesus Christ is the source, the one and only source, which is represented here in this court or in this fence, we'll begin seeing how God's redemption plan is put in place. Preacher, I'm thinking when, when, we, when we enter into the court and the first place is the brazen altar. As you come to that brazen altar, that is the place of sacrifice. That is the ultimate, the place of sacrifice. Had Jesus not died, that's the ultimate. That's, you can't go any further until you get there. That's right. And so when you get there, there must be a death. There must be a sacrifice. You must, and it's not so much as bringing a turtle dove or a little lamb or anything. Like, no, it's God says Christ demands of us a a, a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. As Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies to mortify, therefore, the deeds of the body. Your bodies, a living sacrifice, Amen. holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. This is our problem. This is the world's problem. This is the church problem right now. Yes. Where the church is so conformed to the world. Uh, we're, not, we're not laying down our lives on the altar of sacrifice. Come on now. It's going to take that. It's going to take us revisiting the mourner's benches yes. as yes. we've heard of old. Uh, it, listen, he's the same God now as he was 50 years ago when, or, or, or 75 years ago more so now when people were mourning and weeping and praying. Somebody mourned over my soul. Right. Somebody had to lay down their life as a living sacrifice and prayed me literally out of a devil's hell. Yes. That's what, that's, this is where we've got to be. This is where we've got to go. We should challenge, challenge all of us. Challenge yes. ourselves and, and all of us. 
When is the last time we've hit the altar? Amen, for brother. For a lost soul. I mean, the, the lost people are not coming hunting Jesus in the church. They're not coming. We've got to take him out to them. But anyway, that's a whole other uh, message. But my point is, is, you talked about crying. Somebody cried for your soul. When is yes. the last time that we've actually fell upon our face and cried out for a lost soul? You know, I, that, that takes us to the, to the fact also, when, when was the last time that we, that we actually told someone about Christ? Mm -hmm. When was the last time that, that, that we would take God's word and, and, and try to lead someone to Christ? Or, or uh, as Brother Jamie said, to, to, to mourn for that person and, and, and be burdened for that person. And we can see it in an object lesson here. Uh, that maybe there was some somebody in this camp that that had not uh, known the God of Jeho the Jehovah God, sure. and 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 Brother David, somebody had to say, hey, hey, I, I want to show you something. Yeah, all three million of them weren't that. Weren't yeah, not necessarily. Lord. No, no, not necessarily. And they, and and surely one of them said, hey, uh, God spoke to Moses. God spoke to our leader. And told him that he would meet with us here. God, God spoke. And I was looking in, in Leviticus chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible says that God spoke to Moses out of the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, and, and looking at that, you know, there are people, people all over this world that are needing a touch from God, yes. and it it is almost as if it is almost as if, and I'll say this, and, and and you guys take it from here. We have this pandemic going on, and we have a vaccine. Whatever your opinion is about the vaccines, irrelevant. <laughs> but we have knowledge of the vaccine for the pandemic of humanity, which is sin. And we have it, and it is almost like, especially among the church, and, and, and I'm a pastor, and I'm just as guilty as any uh, of, of taking for granted that everyone knows about the Lord Jesus Christ. And it, it is really as if you are taking the antidote, and you've already been vaccinated. You're immune, but you, have, you are taking the antidote, and you are sticking it in your pocket. And you are going on your merry way. You are going to church on Sunday. And then you're going by, as we all do, we go by Kentucky Fried Chicken and, and don't think about a thing. God, give us a burden mm. to say, yes. hey, brother, I got to get you to the tabernacle. You, you got to bring a sacrifice. And you got to go to the front door, and there's a way, there's God's way. God's got a plan. God's got his, his way of doing things. But I'll tell you, if you go God's way, he's going to do something for you in your life. Preacher, I, I'm, I'm looking at this tabernacle, and I'm thinking, you know, we want to get to the glory. Uh, I mean, I, I would say this. If you're saved by the grace of God, you want to experience the glory. I, I remember... Many old timers uh, make statements uh, when we had this prayer meeting, so to speak. Do you remember when we we got in the glory? Yeah. Well, I, they would use terminology like that, getting in the glory. But before you can get in the glory, you've got to go to the place of pain. Amen. Once you go through the place of pain, then you've got to go through the process of cleansing. You've got to be cleansed. You've got to come to the brazen laver. You've got to be cleansed. And then as you go on in, uh, that bread of life has to become a part of you. I mean, you have to partake of him. And then walking in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And that blood continually cleanses us. Well, hallelujah. And then when you come to that glory to God, you come to that altar of incense you get it. You st you begin to start smelling the fragrance of God yes, Almighty, amen. Almighty amen. God. You begin to get a sniff. I mean, if you want to call it that, I, I, 
that might not be the best way to put it, to, to get a whiff of just the glory of who God is and then to go into the ultimate of all and, and have that. And we are, Jesus said, John said that we have become kings and priests. Right. Amen. And and glory be to God. We we are we have a priesthood, and we have a high priest. Hallelujah! He paid it all. Amen. You know, and I thought about this. We've got to if the songs we sing draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the to the to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, nearer. Precious Lord, Amen. to thy precious bleeding side. Amen. As we draw near to him, as we draw close to him, he begins, that's when the glory can come. Amen. He's in the glory. Amen. He is the glory. Amen. Without him, there is no there glory. Is and by the way, all the glory is his. Right. It's not ours. It never was. It never will be. I'm telling you, everything that, that means anything will be attributed to him who is everything. Right. Amen. He gets all the glory. And so we need to get in that glory. Hallelujah. This is the time. We're, if it's ever been a time Amen. In, in all of history, in all of the church history, right now is the time yes. for us as a church. I, I'm going to tell you. Yeah, it looks bad as far as the government is concerned. But I want to tell you, things are shaping up for the people of God. Yes, they are. Get ready. Get ready. Jesus is coming yes. very, very soon. Yes, he is. Getting yes. excited for the persecution, aren't we? Yes, Amen. sir. It's Amen. coming. You know, uh, I put a little post, and, and we've, we've got about 10 minutes left. And gentlemen, with the help of the Lord, we'll just pick up uh, with the... Uh, with the with the boards and the gate uh, next week, uh, but you know, I, I there's no doubt that especially when when a video like this goes out into internet land, and there and it, and it especially uh, our team will upload this video to to YouTube, and when it goes out there, it is. It's anyone can see it. And there's been times past that uh, we'll get a little derogatory comment from, from an unbeliever as, as pointing as it that we're kind of kooky. <laughs> you know, yeah. But I, you know, I was thinking about that today. You know, in the Word of God that we have and that we put all of our confidence in, and here we are. As Christians, we are in a virtually coinless society knocking on the door of a cashless society. Amen. And we are the kooky ones. <laughs> and yeah, I, want to, I want to say we are in a coinless society and we're approaching a cashless society. But it's not going to be alone on this earth that it's going to be a Christianless society. Amen, that's right. Because the Son of God is going to return and take us on and call us up in the rapture. And I would I would just I would just say to those that think that we are kooky <laughs> uh, to, to look at the word of God. Look at the word of God for yourself and see that, and you know, all, I, all I know, uh, gentlemen, is, is even so, come quickly, Lord. Yes, amen. Even so. Um, Brother David, you being our first time guest in the last few minutes, uh, I want you to look in that camera and I want you to invite someone that may be listening to Christ and close us out in prayer. Amen. You can do that. I'll tell you... Um, you know, throughout all this, this might sound like a lot to take in and a lot to understand, but it simply comes down to that, what Pastor Jeff talked about, that, that simple piece of faith to take that first step. You know, maybe you've been on the fence about it. Maybe you've had a situation where um, the enemy has spoken to you and made you doubt 
and you're sitting here tonight and you're looking at the screen, maybe it's tonight live, maybe it's 10 weeks from now, but you're looking at this screen and you're saying, there's something about what these men are talking about. Well, I'll tell you, tonight can be the night. Today Amen. is the day of salvation. Amen. And all you have to do is take that small step yes. like we talked Lord, about. Absolutely. And God will meet you. Amen. He don't meet you halfway. He takes all those Amen. other steps. He yes, comes he straight to you. Amen. And I encourage you tonight, if you haven't, if you don't have that relationship with Christ, and I mean a real relationship with Jesus, not some religion, a relationship. We're Amen. not even seeking religion in, here at this church or or any, you know, anything we're talking about is not religion. It's about that relationship. Amen. It's to take that step of faith and say, Lord, I don't know everything I need to know, but I know this. I know I don't have what these men are talking about tonight. That I know I haven't stepped through that gate. Yes. I know I haven't entered into that court. Yes. Make that choice tonight. It is a choice. And all you have to do is choose Christ. And it'll be the last decision, the best decision you've ever, ever made. Amen is to take that step of faith. Yes. So if that's you tonight, I would just ask if you just, it's really simple, is to uh, just ask Jesus to come into your life yes. and into your heart. Just tell him, well, let's just pray. Yes. Let's just pray this yes. tonight. And yes. you pray with us. And uh, there's nothing magical about a prayer. There's yes. no special prayer. It's, it's truly about taking that step of faith and making the decision in your mind and I'm going to follow Christ. And I want to follow Christ. I want to make a difference and a change in my life Amen. that will take me to eternity forever. Amen. So let's pray tonight, gentlemen. Yes. <clears throat> Father, we come yes. to you tonight, yes. Lord. We come. Thank you, Jesus. And we thank, thank you for you, this Lord. broadcast. We thank you for this Jesus. word that has been given Lord, tonight. Thank we you, thank Lord, you for what time. you've done. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord. There's thank things you, Lord. unseen. Lord. We have no idea what thank you've this, accomplished Lord. tonight. Lord. But, Lord, we know that you have done something. This is your time and this is your anointing. We're just empty vessels coming forward to, to be filled by you. So, Lord, if there's somebody out there tonight that has listened to this and it has touched their heart, Father, we just ask that you cause them to take that step of faith, to take that step of faith and say, Lord, come into my life and heart. Help me to serve you. Help me to follow you. And I give you all I am. I surrender my yes. life to you. Yes. If, you if, if that's you tonight, just pray yes. that prayer. Yes. Lord, I surrender my life to you. Yes. I literally give everything that I am to you, Father. Come into my heart. Make a dwelling place there so that I can become a dwelling place for you. Yes. Just come into my life and heart and help me to follow you all the days of my life. And help me to worship you. I give you myself. I give you all that I am. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer tonight, yes. if you just drop us a note on yes. the broadcast or in the, in the uh, comment section. Yes. Drop us a note and let us know so we can reach out to you and we can encourage you and, yes. and maybe give you some resources to help strengthen you and help you with yes. your walk with Christ. Because it is a walk. Sometimes it's a run and sometimes it's a fall down, ain't it? Amen. Right. But you know yes. what? It's all about the, the whole process. We all fail. And we all just seeking that glory. Amen. Seeking that glory of the Holy of Holies. Amen. 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 Preacher, Lord. can I make one yes, last appeal? I, I want to ask uh, the viewers tonight to be much in prayer for my daughter. Mm. She's 27 years old. Her name's Sarah Ellis. And she's out in the world and lost and blind tonight. But... I know that God is is God. He's got her. Yes, He's got her. But I'm asking you to to bear this burden with me. Yes, to pray that God will deal with her, that the Holy Spirit will draw her to the cross, and she'll be saved. That's He's already spoken to my heart. But I'm asking you to bear this with me. Yes, Lord. Sure. Uh, my heart is heavy. Uh, m much of the time but I, I can't explain I, I told the pastor I cannot explain the peace there is a peace that passeth all understanding yes, there is. my wife asked me why do you not worry so I, I, I'm not it, she's in the hands of him he's got her 
But I'm asking you to pray God will hedge her and do a work of grace in her life. That's, that's, uh, that I couldn't end this, I could not end tonight without asking you to do that. Yes, yes. Let's, 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 let's remember each other uh, in prayer. And uh, I would ask you in the, just the fleeting moments of, of our broadcast tonight, concerning uh, the picture behind me, concerning the tabernacle, uh, I, I would ask you to, uh, to, to stay with us uh, in the weeks ahead. Uh, you will be amazed at what God would, would have you to see for your own personal walk, uh, your own personal uh, life and walk with Christ. As If you've never actually familiarized yourself with the tabernacle of the Old Testament, now we speak of the temple in the New Testament. And there's a difference between the temple and the tabernacle. That's right. But right now we're speaking uh, of the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, that was the first, uh, the first, uh, so to speak, tip, uh, typified uh, structure uh, that that would show the complete finished work uh, of redemption, and uh, it will it will help you. It will build your faith. It will show you how. Really, it'll show you how to witness. Uh, it will it will give you zeal. Uh, because of, of what Christ has done and because of what uh, God has provided for us through his son. Uh, so as we go through the tabernacle and we're going to do our best and we ask for your prayers uh, as we study and try to re-familiarize ourselves uh, from studies past that will uh, bring this to you in a way that you'd be able to understand it. Uh, if you have any questions at, at uh, or comments, as Brother David mentioned, uh, leave them in the comments. And please do us a tremendous favor. Uh, please share this video. We're trying to build yes. our audience, uh, not for our sakes, uh, but for the cause of Christ. Hey. Uh, we're living in very, very perilous times. People need the Lord. Yes, they do. Uh, young people need to know uh, about. Young people need to know about the tabernacle. The, and it, it, it may be, it may seem boring to some, but if you'll stay with it, if you'll stay with God, God has a desire to to teach you some things, and He'll bless you. And on behalf of the Savior's Cross broadcast, we love you and appreciate you. And with the Lord's help, we'll see you next week. Bye bye.